In this video, we're going to fine tune Gemma 3 using a free Google Colab notebook. We're broken down into seven different sections. We're going to talk about how to install the packages, downloading the model, preparing the data set in a specific way, training arguments, training and saving the model in different formats, but also making inferencing in different ways. Not only that, I'm also going to show you guys how to do, how to save it for VLM support and GGUF format. Now, let's get into it. Here is, of course, install different packages related to Unsloth and many other hugging face packages. But one thing you guys may need to do right now is actually install the latest version of hugging face that allows you to load the Gemma 3 model. And once you guys do that, we'll be using fast model from Unsloth and not fast language model. This is a bit different to the previous Unsloth videos I've made. They've actually updated the package for much easier fine tuning these days, which is of course amazing. Now, from here, we're gonna be defining the max sequence length, D-type, and load in 4-bit, which will help us quantize the model and reduce memory usage. And then we'll be using the Gemma 3 4 billion. This will be a model loading from the Unsolved repository. The reason I'm loading it from here is because if you are in a company that Gemma 3 is not available, because some of the models may not be available based upon where you are. I know you use a bit late, always late, when it comes to getting various other models. So you can actually access from Unsloth, for example. So we can do just that. And we're going to define the max sequence length loading for bit true and full fine tune to false. So let's load our model. You will, or you may actually need a hugging face token. So we're gonna enable that over here, but you can also pass it over here too as a parameter. This may take some time, so please be patient. Now with the model and tokenizer being loaded, we can now add the LoRa adapters. So we only need to update only one to 10% of all the parameters. This actually makes your fine tuning much faster because you're only focusing on a specific set of parameters that will be used through the GPUs, which not only saves you a lot of cost because you need less memory, but also makes it faster. So first thing that we will do is we're going to load the model from fastmodel.getpeftmodel. We pass in our model. We're gonna pass in fine tuning vision to false. These are parameters that you can play with. If you guys have a vision model, and then we're gonna set fine tune language layers to true because we're gonna train it with a conversation data set, which I'm gonna show you guys very, very soon. We're gonna fine tune the attention modules and we're gonna do fine tune MOP modules, multi-layer preceptor modules. Now, the crux of this function is actually defining the R and lower alpha values. Now, previously, this, this is actually quite new to the Unsloth fine tuning procedure. Previously, you had to specifically define module names that you want to fine tune it with. But these days, this kind of does it under the bonnet. All you have to do is define the R parameter and lower alpha parameter, which you guys can play with based upon your data set and problem and see which one works best for you. We can add lower dropout to zero and bias none. And we can add a random state. And there we go. Now, that is loaded. Let's actually prepare our data set. And we'll be using the Maxim LeBones. 100k dataset, which is a conversation dataset that looks like this. You have various boss tokens, start of turn token, and end of turn tokens to simulate a conversational dataset. Now, I get a lot of messages about how to make your dataset or get your dataset to fine tune a model like this for your problem. And to be quite honest with you guys, I myself cannot help you guys with fine tuning a model with your dataset because getting the data set and extracting the data set is a problem that you guys have to solve yourself. That's what makes data science machine learning models so complicated to work with. However, you guys can still use these general pipelines to be able to adapt it to your own data and your own problem. Now, let's see how we actually adjust our data set to our model. So first thing is we'll have to do is get the get chat template from Unsloth with Gemma 3. We can load the data set and then Unsloth now has a standardized data formats which previously you guys had to do it manually, but now you guys can do it yourself, which is pretty nice. To inspect the dataset, this look like this. You have conversations with various JSON objects simulating conversational turns. Now, let's apply the chat template to our dataset that we got from our tokenizer. And then we're gonna select only 10 samples to make this demonstration much, much faster. So let's go ahead and actually train our model. So first thing you guys will have to do is import transformers reinforcement learning package where you get the SFTT trainer, supervised fine tuning trainer, and the config. After that, we're gonna get the trainer. We pass in our model tokenizer and our data sets. So this will look like this. Make sure you guys have an evaluation data set ready for it. This is this will be something that will be part of the training data set. You guys can take out. And then we're gonna pass in our 
arguments. Now, this SFJ config arguments are essentially what, where your training dataset column lies, for example, the batch sizes you want to use, creating accumulation steps, warm up steps, you can define the number of epochs you want to use, define a specific learning rate, you guys can play around with the different learning rate steps and also weight decay to see which one works best for your specific data and problem and this specific model. And I also recommend you guys using some sort of logging system. There's weights and biases. I am not sponsored by them, but that is something I've used myself before and they will give you a good overview of which parameters works best for your problem. So something you guys have to play with. So we can end the parameter over here. Now, what we're going to do next is actually specify the trainer on how the instruction and response part will look like. This apparently is quite also very, very new and something I haven't really seen before is you define the trainer or you pass in the trainer and you can define the instruction part and the response part. So the model and trainer knows where to pick out the information from. Again, it's very, very new for me, for myself too. So I thought this was very, very interesting. Apparently it also makes the training procedure much, much faster too. So this is the memory stats before we start training our model. And now let's go ahead and actually train it. This model has been officially trained. Now, if we look at the final memory and time stats, it took around 12 minutes to train for around 10 samples, which is quite a lot to be honest, and took around 14 gigabytes of memory. Now, good news is we were able to use a T4 GPU, which is a free GPU provided by the Google Colab notebook and done in 13 minutes. Now, we get to finally make inferencing using our model. So let's see how we can do that. First thing I'm gonna show you guys is doing it with a normal inferencing and also with a text streamer for continuous inference. So let's get into that. For this, we'll be using, we'll first use the unsloth chat template to format our data, which is obligatory in this case, where we pass in our message, which is continuing the sequence, and then we will apply it to our, apply the chat template to our message to format it in a specific way. And then we are going to get the output. And just to notify you guys is about unpacking the tokenizer by passing it to the GPU by doing dot two CUDA and we can inference with high speed. And there we go. We got the output with the boss and start of turn token with our response. Now let's do the same thing with text streamer, which is a continuous output of the model. In this case, we actually had to wait with the normal inferencing, but in this case, we can see it in real time. So same procedure, we can tokenize our messages with the chat template and pass it on to text streamer from transformers. So model tokenizer, specify the max token temperature, and of course, initializing the text streamer. And there we can see the continuous inferencing of our response. Now, how do we go about actually saving it to VLLM format? And if you guys didn't know, saving it to VLLM from Unsloth is a bit of a cumbersome process if you guys have tried to deploy it previously, but Unsloth makes it very, very simple to do it. All you have to do is model.safe pre-train merged, GM3 fine-tune for 16-bit saving, and you can also push it to hug and face up. This will automatically save it for VLLM, or it will save it for floating 16-bit that can be used for VLLM deployment. Or you guys can also save it in the GGUF format for the Llama CPP deployment and serving as well. Again, I will provide the link to this Google Cloud Notebook if you guys can actually use it very easily. All right, guys, hope you found this video insightful. If you guys didn't, please feel free to subscribe. I make similar videos like these. All right, guys, I hope to see you in my next video. Have a nice day.